Pete Buttigieg has spent 64 days in Iowa since launching his presidential campaign last April. The former South Bend, Indiana mayor spent his day in Des Moines, continuing to make his case to Hawkeye state voters before they head to caucus sites. Buttigieg, who turns 39 the day before inauguration, would be the youngest president in American history by more than three years. Reggie Love worked as a personal aide to Barack Obama during the 2008 election, and much of his first term, he joins me now as a surrogate for Pete Buttigieg. Thank you so much for being here, Reggie. Elaine, thank you for having me. So what does victory look like for the Buttigieg campaign? Look, uh, this has been uh, a whirlwind of uh, the last few months. Um, this campaign really has shown that there's a lot of energy and there's a, a, a lot of support for the message that uh, Pete Buttigieg has. And I think our, our biggest goal is to make sure that in the 1,681 uh, precincts where we have precinct captains that we're organized and we turn up and we show up and uh, we get as many delegates as we can get. Is it a top three finish, something that you would consider a victory here in Iowa? I mean, I would assume it, it, it looks like it's going to be pretty tight. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play pundit here and tell you exactly what it's going to be, but I think if our organization uh, shows up today with the same energy that they've shown up with over the last uh, months here on the ground, I think uh, we'll, we'll do just fine. I know that you don't want to play pundit, but is anything less than a first place win a victory for the mayor here? Look, a year ago, uh, most people couldn't even pronounce Pete Buttigieg. Uh, now he's, you know, he's having rallies in Des Moines with 2,100 people showing up. Uh, he's spent almost 60 plus days here in Iowa. Uh, he's raised uh, a, a significant amount of money that most people probably thought was pretty improbable. Uh, I think if, uh, if you're Pete, you probably feel like you're pay playing with house money at this point in time. So when you look at early state polling averages, Pete Buttigieg is right around the 15 percent mark to earn delegates in the first two states, Iowa and New Hampshire. But when you look at the next two states, Nevada and South Carolina, he's in the single digits. So if he does not see victory tonight or next Tuesday, does he still have a path to the nomination? Look, I think if I, I think he's going to have the resources and the energy to to stay in this uh, for a very long period of time. If, you know, in some scenario in which he doesn't score for whatever reason. I think it's going to be very, very challenging. But I don't, I don't see that happening. And and ultimately, when you get to places like Nevada and South Carolina, um, our resources have not really been indexed there the way they have been spent here in, in Iowa and places like New Hampshire. And I think when people get to spend the time and get to hear Pete's message, uh, those numbers will look significantly different. I want to take a step back and talk about why you're supporting Pete Buttigieg. Why is the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, the best option that Democrats have, you believe, to take on President Trump? Yeah, look, I, I look at it in two buckets. I think uh, the, the the most important thing is uh, we need to pe we need people to feel inspired uh, that they believe that their voice matters and that there is someone out there that knows their pain and knows what it's like uh, to be an American. Right, the median age of Americans is 39 uh, and a half. The representation in D.C., uh, the federal level is almost 63. Um, I think Pete my for me personally, I think Pete is the kind of guy that uh, inspires hope and inspires people to believe that their voice matters and that instead of having uh, results like in 2016 where people weren't as excited to participate in the process because they didn't believe that their voice really made a difference, I think if we get great turnout in November, um, I think that's what will make the difference. And I think we need someone who, you know, doesn't believe that it's status quo or it's got to be a total revolution. Um, if you've seen some of the numbers, Pete has visited uh, 27 counties here in Iowa that voted for Obama, uh, that flipped to Trump, and he's gotten more turnout there than any other candidate. And I think getting uh, future former Republicans uh, to be uh, Pete supporters is, is going to be a big uh, a big component to being able to, to win in November. What do you say to some Democrats who look at your background and say, why are you supporting Pete Buttigieg and not Joe Biden? Look, I, Pete, Vice President Biden has been a great friend and a great public service uh, servant. I have the most amount of respect for everything that he's done. Um, I feel right now, I think we need someone that is a little bit uh, more of an outsider. If you look at history, uh, when Democrats have performed well uh, in the general election, it's been 
people who have been outsiders from D.C. or little experience have been a little bit younger and have been able to create a very broad coalition. Someone of like Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, like those are where we've won. And, you know, the data shows you, we've, when we've gone with sort of the safe choice, an Al Gore, a John Kerry, uh, Hillary Clinton, we've not performed the way that we've performed when we've went in the other direction. So are you saying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so you tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing you, it sounds like, say that the value of the political experience that someone like a Joe Biden got serving under President Obama just isn't the same as it used to be in elections past. Am I hearing that correctly? Uh, no, I think I'm saying that it's always been overvalued and it's never actually performed. That sounds like the same way of saying it, just slightly different. Yeah. So you're yeah. looking at it from a very pragmatic perspective, and that that political experience, while it may be valuable in some respects, you think by the metric that this particular contest is going to be measured by, and that is electability. That's really all that matters here. Yeah, I, I think that's what history has told us. All right, Reggie Love. Reggie, thank you so much for stopping by. Really no, appreciate your thank time. Thank you for having me. Uh, look. What are you doing tonight? Uh, look, I, I, I'm going to try to, I, I might go get a slice of pizza from the gas station. <laughs> you going to go try and change people's minds at one of these sites? Oh, no. Look, I'm, I, I have a lot of respect for the process. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to, to watch the results and to see, uh, to see what happens. Uh, right. It's a, a special day, a special evening. It's underway. Thank you so much, Reggie. All right. Thank you.